For sure, we look at all those trends. And we have seen in recent months that the overall business environment globally, not only in Europe, but particularly in Germany, has become much more challenging than it was before. And uh, we also see that in our business. Uh, yet uh, we also have to see this in a bigger context, because what we discuss here at the World Economic Forum in Davos is how we can totally transform the overall economy to a more circular economy. And that is exactly where my company is already engaged for many, many years, because we are producing products that really help to make the world more sustainable and that's why mid to long term we really have also very good outlook in terms of the need for our products and also our services to our customers. Marcus I get it and I've always got the Covestro story so much so that I've lambasted various buyer CEOs and chairmen for getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. So but, but with that in mind uh, and please take this in the spirit it's meant your shares have been absolutely destroyed over 52 weeks. They were 95 euros. They're now last print 45, 36 as well. Mm -hmm. That isn't just a minor slowdown for what is a very, I know your company, I, I know quite a bit, I think the polymers business, it should be very strong. To lose those kind of share prices, something bad is happening out there, isn't it? Well, you have to see it in the overall context. I mean, despite the really strong corrections that we have seen over the last 12 months, the stock price has still performed very well from its, uh, let's say, first IPO. We started at 26 euros. That was sure our first listing sure. and now we see that we're yesterday closed you, around 45 you're just euros. showing the kind of oscillation that a, t a young tech company not a sophisticated polymers business shows I mean that that is not good for anyone that kind of volatility is it it means you can't necessarily raise capital against it with confidence uh, you can't assure it get the right kind of investors you do not want activists necessarily you want longer-term investors mm -hmm. it creates a whole host of problems sir well we have a very very clear strategy and the strategy is that we are investing in our products because the overall mid to long-term outlook for our products is still very positive we will grow above GDP with those products. We're serving a vast range of industries that still shows overall long-term good growth momentum like automotive, for example, furniture, construction industry. And we're entering more and more into fields, for example, like cosmetics, but also medical. If you take all this into consideration, I think we are very well prepared. We're doing an efficiency program to really make sure we have the most cost-effective uh, structures in the company and not leave any value on the table. And in addition, we are heavily investing in those products that are in demand and really pushing our innovation driven by sustainability. Can I just ask one more before Jeff comes back in? And very often in this situation, and I'm sorry to bring it back to that, people either say to you, you need to get involved in corporate action, i.e. go the inorganic route, or others say, we need to take a look at Covestro because maybe it would be a great fit for our company. Mm -hmm. Corporate action, if I've heard one thing this week as well, it's that M&A does not always work. It does not necessarily boost the, the end result, the revenues you want to see as well. Are you going to be involved in more corporate action, do you think? Well, we have absolutely clearly always communicated that we create value for our shareholders. So if you look at the investments that, that we do in our products, if you look at our dividend policy, if we look at the share buyback program that we have just recently closed in December, we are about to ask the annual general meeting in Germany uh, and suggest to them that they will actually allow us to go for another share buyback program. Mm -hmm. And in addition, we're looking to M&A opportunities. But I was always clear about it that M&A is one thing for us to create value for our shareholders. It's not the only thing. And we will really do this very diligently. We are not in a rush and are not here just to do M&A for the sake yeah. of M&A. It has to create value for our shareholders. Okay. That, the, uh, that is the utmost important guiding principle for us. Yeah. Um, increasingly, the momentum is building for us to change the way we think about plastic usage. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you were hinting on mm -hmm. earlier on in, in your first answer. Mm -hmm. So let's just come back to this. Um, David Attenborough was here, of course, making the case for us to be putting less plastic into the ocean. Mm -hmm. From where you're sitting, that's not necessarily a good business story, is it? It is a perfect business story. And let me tell you why. P uh, plastic is kind of a paradox. There's a paradox perception in, uh, in the general public. And we take this very serious as industry leaders. Why is that? On the one hand, we see all those horrible pictures of plastics in the ocean. And we don't want to see those pictures anymore. We need to clean this up. And we need to make sure that we manage the waste streams in a very, very effective way to really make sure that no plastics end up in landfill, no plastics end up in the ocean in the end of the day. So there's a couple of measures we are taking. That's why we have recently launched the so-called Alliance Against Plastic Waste, and we have 30 leading companies throughout the envir uh, entire value chain, for example, plastic producers, converters, uh, consumer good brands, but also waste management companies that have put already now at the starting phase 
1 billion euros on the table to support projects over the next five years where we will clean up this mess. That's the vicious part of plastics. Now let's talk about the virtues of plastics. If we talk about the virtues, we really have a lot of things where plastics is helping us to have a more sustainable world and also help people to have a more sustainable life. A few examples for that. Yeah, Marcus, we, yeah. just, just to move you on, sure. it's a short interview and I, I think people will, will understand how plastic is important. Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay? Who's going to pay? Because there is a cynical community out there who looked at what happened with mm -hmm. green energy mm -hmm. and renewables mm -hmm. and said, how come we ended up paying for a lot of this? And we've got riots in France because people are mm -hmm. annoyed that they've had to pay higher taxes <clears throat> on fuel. Are we going to have to pay for the cleanup? Or as is I said, the, the alliance industry going to take it on the chin. As I said, there is an entire value chain. It's not the plastics industry; it's the big consumer brands. It's waste management companies. It's also plastic producers and converters who have put significant money on the table already. As of today, more than one billion euros to really fight this over the next five years, mm -hmm. and we are still counting new members. And if you look at the positive side of plastics, we are saving energy. We're helping to preserve food. We're helping to stop food wasted. We're helping mm -hmm. to uh, have people. Uh, better life people can live more healthy we save energy because the best energy that you can actually uh, make is the energy that you don't use so we have highly insulated for example buildings we have highly effective refrigerators we're talking about lightweight mobility that make us more fuel effective and efficient and so on and so forth and plastics are the mm. material that make renewables possible yeah.